Hey there, I'm Mark from Spectrum Pulse, and today we have, from the Mountain Goats, Jenny from Thebes. You know, I guess I should be surprised that we didn't get this album from John Darnielle sooner, for as many distinctive characters that he's created and adapted over the course of so many decades of musical storytelling. Essentially taking the half-referenced character of Jenny, first mentioned back on All Hail West Texas, and then in passing on other projects, and then giving her the story, expanding it. Not so much a lore dump, but having the feel of a side adventure that's less conceptual than the string of projects from Beat the Champ to last year's phenomenal lead out. And as someone who was considerably later to the Mountain Goats than many of the diehards, it did require I go back and revisit some of those old songs referencing Jenny, look at whatever enticing context there was before this to inspire it all. And here's the thing, Jenny is less of a character than a presence, a figure you don't think about when your life is good, you don't need to, but when it's all careening out of control and it's getting rougher, she kind of slips into view, less a stabilizing presence but an echo who is then projected onto by so many of the protagonists. And it's actually thus a neat trick for John Darnielle to start giving her a lot more agency, more of a place in the narrative than the lingering callback to Pirate Jenny of the Three Penny Opera. Although, ironically, even given how scrappy and really desperate the storytelling can seem here, it is a fascinating or even optimistic recontextualization. Brecht had Jenny exact a lot of cruel revenge on the town that misunderstood and badly mistreated her, despite whatever comfort she provided, Darniel is a lot more humanistic and nuanced. She's still the semi-anonymous figure that provides solace to those who are on the very edges, who are on the run, but when she makes the choice to end that comfort, follow some of her own path, she winds up identifying by the act that was meted out, and is then forced to abandon much of her own mythos to scrounge for herself on the road, including her legendary Kawasaki motorcycle. Hell, by Jenny 3, the old love to which she gave temporary comfort is shaken really badly by her reappearance, because now seeing her desperate vulnerability forces him to reckon with her as more of a full person and everything that he projected onto her. And thematically, it is pretty potent. It shows just how much impact even the slightest care provided in the most dire moments can have. And paradoxically, when you stop caring for each other, the fragility of that network and those connections is all the more stark, especially for outlaws where they gotta lean on dreams and mythos over a desolate reality. Potentially even meta text surrounding what weight we give to those stories to continue the arc that John Darnielle's been tracing for several years now. Now, if you find the story kind of harder to follow, or what I'm describing doesn't make a lot of sense, or that this all feels kind of broadly sketched, well, okay, part of that is intentional. We're dealing with a figure who is necessarily more abstracted across the Mountain Ghost's catalog, and given the whole living on the edge mystique, it would make a certain amount of sense for just plausible deniability to be built in at every curve of the story. But it also means the truly cutting, precise details don't quite have that same impact. And this is where we have to get into the execution and some more contentious thoughts. Now on the one hand, keeping some of the percussion looser and the influx of horns, it seems to create a bit of a callback to an act like Steely Dan and some of their morally ambiguous characters, where in demystifying the myths, it winds up feeling more normal. Hell, they did this back with goths as well. Now that being said, the writing and tunes, they necessarily feel more diffuse. They don't quite stick compared to their very strongest. They don't have that deeper impact. A throwback to the older song-focused vignettes that could be so captivating in a lot of the implied mystery, but there's just less mystery this time. Less urgency, less grit, less striking character outside of a couple fractured moments like the spare vocal harmonies, or the haunted grooves of ground level or from the Nebraska plant, or some of the chirpy melodies behind Only One Way, or the aching strings as same as Cash and Jenny 3, or the jittery percussion on Fresh Tattoo. So thus overall it feels kinda like a detour with fan service and callbacks and a pretty compelling narrative once you really dig into it. I think there's thematic meat here, but it also comes with a big risk of demystifying backstory, and that it can feel much less compelling than what's already been imagined and built up as legacy. And while aging into a more lived-in reality, it's been a thematic through line across a number of recent albums from John Darnielle, eventually you kinda hit diminishing returns. It is still really good, I think for those who are deeply invested in Mountain Goat's lore, you're gonna get a lot out of it. I just wish it clicked a little bit more deeply. 
at least for me. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you want to see more reviews, please be sure to like and share and drop a subscription if you want. Drop some comments especially too. For Mountain Goats fans who are diehards, I'm curious where you're going to fall on this because again, I think some of my points might be a little contentious, especially as, again, for as much as the mythos has now been explored, it's just not quite as special feeling to me. But beyond that, if you guys want to get projects on my schedule, link to my Patreons right over there. And as always, I'm Mark. You're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.